research and discovery. Futurists. Early morning in Los Baños Market, 60 kilometers southeast of the Philippines capital, Manila. For local people, it's a rich and essential source of food. There's fruit and fish, meat and vegetables are plenty here. But it's rice, the world's main food staple, that sells in the greatest quantities. Around 2 billion people worldwide depend on it for their daily intake of nutrients. I have, I have uh, seven or eight varieties of rice. One thing that I am um, very particular of is the taste of the rice. Maybe aroma is second. Rice is a sunset for us. It's our stepper food. And the softer, the tastier, the better. Rice. Even if you have only, let's say, dried fish or maybe fried egg and so on uh, with that sophisticated uh, viand with, but with good quality rice in your table that is enough <laughs> providing affordable high quality rice is the mission of scientists working at the international rice research institute in los baños thousands of rice varieties are planted harvested stored selected and analyzed here the Institute is a key player in a European research project looking for new ways to produce very aromatic, highly nutritious rice. So-called supergrains would benefit both consumers and producers as exports would increase. The quest starts here. Cereal chemist Melissa Fitzgerald is the project's local coordinator. One gene responsible for fragrance has already been discovered. Melissa guesses there's another compound responsible for aroma. We're looking at these varieties to try and find the other gene so that eventually what we hopefully can do is combine those two genes and that the, they will have an additive effect that we'll get fragrance from gene number one plus fragrance from gene number two so we can get super aromatic rice. All crossings in the project are done through artificial fertilization. Pollen from different species is mixed. One PhD student in agrimony from Laos has crossed two different rice varieties from her country. Both are aromatic, but one of them hardly grows during the dry season, and even during the wet season its yield is low. Today she's planting the new crossbred species. She's expecting it to flourish in poorer soil and produce highly aromatic grains. We plant between five and ten plants per line. Once grown and harvested, we'll study its DNA. Hopefully we'll come up with a really aromatic variety that will also be convenient for soils poor in nutrients. Then we can start working on a breeding program specific to that particular variety. Melissa gets ready to enter a giant, refrigerated gene bank where tens of thousands of rice varieties are stored. She's looking for the types that are the richest in micronutrients. Unearthing rice's chemical secrets will help develop varieties with superior nutritional properties with the aim of combining them with highly aromatic kinds. We're looking at the distribution of mineral elements, so iron, zinc, magnesium, all of these minerals in the different grains from different parts of the panicle. And if it turns out that the grains on the outer branches are far more densely micronutrient uh, or contain a much denser concentration of micronutrients, then we can breed specifically for panicles of that particular architecture. After both traditional and cross crops have been planted and harvested, their grains are further analysed. Unlike most supermarket rice, grains grown in experimental plots are clearly traceable pure breeds. Their genetic and chemical data are extremely valuable. Seeds are first dried, cleaned and polished. They're then carefully selected. The chosen ones undergo a battery of experiments. 
The physical qualities of the grain are also measured and studied to understand which part is richer in nutrients. This machine tells us all of the physical qualities of the rice grain. It tells us the dimensions of the grain, the shape. So long slender grains, you can compared with short fat grains, you can imagine that something's more volatile or passes through a long slender grain much more easily than it does through a short fat one. So what we're doing here is essentially cataloguing the physical properties or the physical traits of the samples of rice that we're sending to Europe. Their final destination is Wageningen in the Netherlands. Experimental white rice from the Philippines is analyzed here again. Scientists are seeking ways to enhance its flavor and nutritional qualities to match those of nutrient-rich brown rice. It's very important that we can a little bit analyze what kind of compounds might be different between the white rice and the brown rice, for instance. Most nutrients are in the outer layer of the, of the rice. So for instance, brown rice, which you can buy in the shops here in Europe, for instance, contain a lot of more compounds than the white polished rice from, from Asia, for instance. And that is very important because specifically these brown rice compounds, which are present in the brown rice, are believed to be healthy for human, to help in the uh, intestinal tract and uh, may help some effects on blood pressure, etc. For Robert Hall, the project's coordinator, this research will help improve existing breeding strategies for the benefit of both consumers and producers. The aim of this project is to, uh, to develop the knowledge which will allow uh, rice breeders to improve uh, the rice grain production and that will benefit directly the producers and growers in, in, in developing countries like the Philippines because uh, they can then produce a, a product which has a better quality and therefore a better will get a better market price and it will be more easier to sell on the market. Back in the Philippines, the markets embrace a new harvest season. Around 40 people work at this farm near Los Banos. Twice a year, two aromatic species, jasmine and dinarada, are planted and harvested here. Other less aromatic rice species are also grown in smaller quantities. Every season we grow jasmine, because jasmine will make a one and a half or two pesos higher than the ordinary varieties. Because it's aromatic and uh, it's very nice in, in, inside the mouth. We have the choice, uh, we will always plant only the uh, aromatic varieties. But the trouble is, uh, 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 it's not uh, safe to plant only one variety. Uh, uh, there must be some other varieties to lean on. Huh? In other words, uh, uh, two, two engines is better than a single engine. Asian and European scientists hope their joint research will soon make available an even richer, more aromatic kind of rice. Come